So we have seen in the previous video how we can use a mutex to guard our shared resource and the problems that we can have if we don't uh, guard our shared resource if two different tasks tries to access it at the same time and what a critical section is. So in this video we will do the actual programming. Uh, first we will induce a problem of a concurrency that is we will induce a situation where uh, we have a, a data contamination uh, of, the, of the shared resource and then we will um, look into how we can use a mutex to solve that problem. So um, first, um, as an example that we have seen before, um, I'm going to have a shared resource and I'm going to call it uh, my shared resource. And let's give it a size of 10 characters. Task 1 will have a local area, we'll call it uh, task 1 message which is going to be potatoes and what task 1 will do is um, it will take this data um, from task 1 message and copy it into this shared resource uh, my shared resource but it will do it one character at a time with a definite interval or definite delay in between them. So let's do that. Uh, let's do it in a for loop for i equals to zero, i less than nine. Now, um, uh, for this example, the two tasks that we are using will use uh, the two words tomatoes and potatoes respectively, and both of them are nine characters. So um, so I can just use 9 in the for loop and uh, my shared resource i will be equal to task 1 message i and I'll have a delay in between them so we toss delay of let's say 50 milliseconds and also we need to end any string with a null character so shared resource the last the last character will be a null character or a zero and then we we just print this message that we have copied in my shared resource so we will write as d1 says um, my shared resource and this has to be inside the while loop. Forgot that. Okay, so uh, so what's going to happen is task one will will take this message from task one message and copy it into my shared resource one character at a time with a definite uh, delay interval in between of 15 milliseconds, and then it will print the message from my shared resource. Task 2 will do the exact same thing, but uh, task 2 will have a different message. So the message for task 2 is going to be let's rename them. This is going to be task 2 message and it's going to be tomatoes. This is going to be task 2 message. Um, this will be task 2. So task 2 will also write into the same shared resource into the same array that we have created so both these tasks are going to fight over uh, writing into this data and we're going to have a problem of concurrency in here so if you look into this program here if you run it um, okay. let's see how it works so task one we expect it to print tomatoes and it somehow manages to do that but task 2 instead of printing tomatoes it prints tomatoes and this is not what we expect this happens because um, when task 1 uh, you know, writes into, uh, uh, into the shared resource task 2 gets its access but even before task 1 completes writing the, the entire message and printing it out task 2 gets a control and uh, and it starts overwriting this shared resource without knowing that task one has some pending work to do it just doesn't care it's like you know i got the control of the cpu i have to do what i have i'm supposed to do that is write tomatoes into the shared resource and print it 
and it just does that so here we have the problem of concurrency and we want to make sure that while task 1 or while task 2 is uh, doing something with the shared resource or using it to read into it and write from it or whatever other tasks should not um, interrupt it it should not uh, do anything with this shared resource at the time so we need to guard this shared resource whenever we are in something called the critical section so this section is very critical so this is why they call it a critical section and we also have the critical section for task 2 so during the critical section we have to make sure that this resource is guarded and that's when we are going to use something called a mutex um, to use a mutex the first thing you do is you include the semaphore header file so let's do that include semaphore.edge and you create a mutex data type it's similar to how you have a task handle uh, underscore t we have something called semaphore handle underscore t let's call it x mutex now in free RTOS, if you are creating a semaphore or a mutex the data type is always semaphore handle underscore t but you have to declare um, in main what data what data is this for or, or this this data x meter what exactly is it so you have to define it and we use um, uh, this function uh, let me check it's x semaphore create mutex x semaphore create mutex so now we have created our mutex and how we use the mutex is before we enter the critical section so let's do this on uh, this critical section let us put it inside a bracket so, so we have our critical section in a bracket the same thing will do it for task 2 so before we enter the critical section we want to make sure that we gain access to the shared resource so we need to check if this lock this mutex it, it can be taken so if we use the function we need to check it first so we use the if statement if x semaphore take x x semaphore takes because we're going to take access and this function has two parameters the first one is which mutex you want to take or get access to and the second parameter is a blocking time so yeah if you want to have a specific blocking time you can use it but for now i'm just going to be i'm going to use an indefinite blocking time so use tick type underscore t and put the maximum value that you can hold in the register and this function will return one if it is able to take the mutex or get the access if it is true only then i enter the critical section if not just go down and wait for some time till you get your turn back so we toss the delay of 100 milliseconds let's say so now task 2 needs to do the same thing it needs to check if it can get the access to the, to the mutex and once it's done it needs to release it as well yeah another thing is that let me copy the vtask delay here as well because after it's done it needs to release it so once you get access to the mutex and you enter the critical section you do whatever you want you have to make sure that you release the mutex so you need to give it back away because you've taken it you have to give it back so other tasks can also use it so you use a function called x semaphore give and the only parameter is the mutex that you want to give so the structure is really simple you have this function this if statement to check if the mutex can be taken and then you have your critical section and then you just give away the mutex so this is a basic structure basic skeleton for using a mutex in free of course the same thing i'm going to do in in my task 2 as well so there you go so now what's going to happen is um oh, task 1 it takes the mutex and then it enters the critical section and it starts doing whatever it wants now even if the kernel switches to task 2 then task 2 will start running and then it will try to get access to this to this mutex but mutex is this 
it's already taken by task one so this function will return a fail it will return a zero so task two will know that okay i cannot get access to this mutex it means some other task is using it so it just goes back goes down to this vtask delay and it waits until it can get its turn back to get access to this mutex so if we look at the pro the, the program now if we run it let's see what we have so there you go task 2 task 1 printing tomatoes and potatoes just fine so we got rid of our concurrency problem so this is how you use a mutex to share to guard a shared resource